Okay, here's a fun uh, algebra problem from the SHSAT, and um, what it taps in upon is this whole idea of fractions and reciprocals, and that's why I love it. So let's just go through it. It says if x plus y equals 10 and x times y equals 20, then 1 over x plus 1 over y equals y, which of the following? And my first instinct in solving this usually is something like, okay, well, if x plus y equals 10, and x times y equals 20, what are the values of x and y? And I, I start to think, well, okay, what numbers multiply at 20? 1 and 20, 4 and 5, and then 10 and 2. Um, but I, and then you run into a problem because there are no whole numbers that multiply to 20 and add up to 10. So you start to get stuck for a moment. But that's where um, the whole idea of pattern hunting really steps into play. So I would start with something simple. I would say, okay, well, Let's just say we had two numbers. Um, let's, let's try 2 plus 2. What does that equal? Well, that equals 4. And then, well, here they're saying, well, they want to know what's 1 over x and 1 over y. So my first instinct, if we know x and y are the same, what do we know about 1 over x? So instead of 2, 1 over 2. And instead of y being 2, we have 1 over y, which is 1 over 2. What do we get? Well, we get 2 over 2, a fraction. Okay, and keep going. Let's try the next scenario. Let's try 3 plus 3. So I'm trying scenarios where x and y are equivalent. This might help me understand some basic pattern hunting. So here we get 2 over 3. Okay, so 6, 2 over 3. And we'll do a couple more. 4 plus 4 is 8. And then we have 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. That equals 2 fourths. Notice I'm not simplifying. We have 5 plus 5 that equals 10. And then what do we have? Well, we have 1 fifth plus 1 fifth. So just looking at patterns here to understand um, how this might work, I noticed that here we have two numbers. We have um, 2 and 2, or 3 and 3, or 4 and 4, and 5 and 5. So we have a plus a, a number plus itself. And that, of course, is going to equal 2a. That's confirmed in all of these, right? 10 is twice 5, 8 is twice 4, 6 is twice 3, and 4 is twice 2. But what about 1 over a plus 1 over a? Any number, right? Take the reciprocal of it and add it to itself. What do we get? Well, 1 plus 1 is 2. And then a plus a, well, we don't get 2a, right? Because we're adding fractional parts. So this is how many a's, how many 1 over a's we have. So it's 2 over a, two a's, two one over a's, excuse me. What does that mean? Well, look at this. It says if you start with the number a and you add it up, you're going to get two a. But this one over x, one over y, what's gonna happen every time when the two numbers are the same? Well, we're always going to get two on the top, that's what it says over here, and we do, two, 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 and two. And then the bottom, we just get a. In other words, the original number itself, or, or half of two a, half the sum. And that happens each time. Here's five and five, 4 and 4, 3 and 3, and 2 and 2. And you might be thinking, well, this doesn't help me at all. But it does, because this kind of launches us into the next question, which is necessary. Well, instead of A plus A, what if we have A plus B? Or in this case, X plus Y, right? This forces us to think about the general scenario. Well, if you have X plus Y, it could be any sum. We don't know what it's going to be, right? It's a mystery sum. But we do know that if we have 1 over x plus 1 over y, that we can simplify this and think about in general terms what this would be. How do you combine two different fractions with different denominators? Well, you get the least common denominator, right? So in this case, x here and y there. So that means the common denominator is x times y. So I'm going to multiply my first fraction by y over y, right? And let's just think about this in concrete terms up here for a moment. Let's say I have one half plus um, one third. Well, what's the common multiple here? Well, it's two times three. And it's not always going to be the least common multiple if you just multiply the two denominators, but uh, that's how we'd find it, right? Two and three both go into six. In other words, two times three. And what would I do to add up these two? You just can't add one plus one, right? Well. I'm writing now in terms of sixth, or two times three. So here I have two, so I'm gonna multiply three and three, three over three by one half. 
and that gives me 3 sixth. So we get 3 plus here, what am I, am I going to multiply? Well, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. So I want to get that 6 right there. So it's really 1 times 2, which is 2. Simplify this, we get 5 sixth. But that's exactly what we're doing now down here. It's just all with algebra. So here we're going to add what? Well, we multiplied 1 over x by y over y, just like we multiplied 1 half by 3 over 3. And we're going to multiply 1 over y by 2 over 2, just like we multiplied by um, x over x, just like we multiplied 1 third by 2 over 2. I'm just basically combining two fractions. What's going to happen now? Well, 1 times y is y, plus 1 times x is x, and our denominator is xy or yx, same thing. I'm just going to flip the order around. I think you'll see something nice here. y plus x, or x plus y, over xy. So in other words, 1 over x plus 1 over y is equal to x plus y over xy. And we solved it. Why? Because they tell us. x plus y is 10, isn't it? So x plus y is 10. x times y, we know, is 20. So we get 10 over 20, or our answer, 1 half. Now notice we never had to find out what x and y actually are here, we, but we still were able to solve this by finding a pattern and a connection. Alright, hope this helped.